Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question uh, who was talking about my strength standards, and he says, Jason, why don't you ever talk about uh, body weight as a relationship uh, to people's level of experience when you talk about strength standards? You seem to just set absolute numbers and say everyone uh, in the roughly average height range, this is what I expect from them. Uh, why do you do that? Uh, shouldn't their body weight matter? So let me put on my plus five head of weaponsmithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about it. All right, uh, and someone else kind of came in there and said, yeah, I mean, but uh, what about their height and everything? Um, and shouldn't you think about it that way? If a guy is six foot tall and 160 compared to a guy who's 5'4 and 180 and, and stack, you know, looks like he's stacked out of bricks there, there's going to be a difference. I'm sure the shorter guy is going to be a lot stronger. Well, yeah, and that's why a lot of times I say that height actually matters. Uh, height is probably a better judge compared to your strength than anything else. The reason for that is that we don't have to differentiate between muscle mass and fat mass. A guy who is taller is going to gain muscle faster than a guy who's shorter. More muscle equals more weight moves, more strength. I don't care who you are, if you have gained muscle proportionally through your whole body, all your lifts are going to go up. All right? It's that simple. And taller guys gain muscle faster because they have more muscle mass to start, a longer frame to stretch it across than shorter guys do. That's why we talk about noobs can gain one to two pounds of muscle per month. That's noob gains. Why is that range so enormous? That's an enormous range. That's not based upon just genetics because someone's genetics for muscle growth don't even vary that much. They don't vary 100%. But a man who's 5'2 versus a man who's 5'4 does. That's why you have those extreme ranges. Uh, that's what we're looking at. That's what we're talking about. And you know what? At the end of the day, sure, we could argue that point. We could argue that taller guys should generally be str uh, stronger than weaker guys. They're also going to weigh more. But the thing is, when we look at purely body weight, that is a terrible measure of judging um, what we're looking for for training experience uh, and strength. The reason we do these things this way, and I know they get called novice, intermediate, and advanced, and maybe that's not the correct terms to use. Those aren't there to say how long you've been lifting, because you know what? You don't need to classify yourself to say how long you've been lifting. You can say, I've been lifting a year, I've been lifting five years, I've been lifting 17 years. That's an absolute number. The purpose of these categories is to determine recovery rates versus your uh, absolute strength. All right. When we start talking about weight, they're trying to throw it around because they're trying to put people back into weight classes for sports. That's the reason weight gets discussed at all. And here's what I mean. If you were to use that classification, if you were to take a guy who could squat whatever, uh, let's say 350 pounds. Let's say 350 pounds for your body weight. Uh, I don't even know what the charts are going to say out there. Let's say it's 170. 170 pounds. That guy can squat 350 pounds uh, when he crosses into an intermediate. He's into the intermediate. Maybe it's 330, but he can squat 350. So he's an intermediate. So if he ran over and went on an all-out binge, all-out binge, we know that people can gain a pound of fat a day. Scientifically proven fact. And he were to binge his ass off and not try to get any stronger and add any weight to the bar and gains 30 pounds of fat in a single month, and he goes all the way up to 200 pounds, does he become a novice again? See the problem here? The problem with body weight is that it's not taking these things into account. It's not looking at body composition. It's just looking at body weight. And I don't like that because that basically means guys who are leaner are going to be more advanced and guys who are fatter are going to be more novice. But that also means... If they should use a different sort of training program. Now, are you guys telling me that if a guy goes and gets really, really fat, that after he gets fat and he's done bulking and he normalizes his weight again, that he should be running a, a less experienced level of program, that he's going to run a faster progression program because he got fatter? That's the problem with using body weight. It's not a very useful tool. Um, I would say, if anything, we need to look at height. Height. And notice, though, that I just say that's for people in the normal height range, you know, anywhere from about 5'6 up to about 6'1. Because then I say that if they're taller than that, they're probably going to hit higher strength standards to get out of my novice program. And if they're shorter than that, they're probably going to be a little lower. And I think that's fair because we put it kind of in a range. I think that's a better measure. And why is that? Well, the whole point of knowing if you are a novice, an intermediate, or advanced lifter is to know how much workload you can generate and how well you can recover from it. Because the stronger you get, 
people need to remember if your one rep max goes up, so does your 10 rep max, so does your 20 rep max. They're all related. If you take a 300 pound squat and go from 300 to 400 pounds on it, I promise you your 10 rep max has probably gone up 30% also. All right, it's going to be very, very proportionate. So that means that these, someone who has gained that much strength can generate a 30% higher workload and a 30% more trauma to their body per work set. That basically means they're going to be able to generate workloads that they struggle to recover from easier, uh, particularly when you start doubling your strength. Because again, someone who can squat 400 pounds for 10 reps that's going to tax their body more than when they could squat 200 pounds for 10 reps. Even the same person, and anyone who's trained long enough knows this. If you've been training three or four years really hard, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You used to be able to come in and go all out as a novice. Look at guys on my novice program. They can come in and squat five sets of five, almost fail on the fifth set, right? Add five pounds and come in and hit that two, three days later. Then two or three days later, they can add another five pounds and do the same thing, all right? Uh, that's when they're noobs. That's when they got 150 pounds on the bar. When you get to where you can squat 365 pounds for five sets of five, and you almost fail the fifth one, come in and try to squat heavy again in two days and see what happens. Yeah, the more experienced lifters know what I'm saying. Your strength's going to probably go down, all right? Because you're talking about getting well into intermediate numbers there. Strong intermediate lifters, and I'm going to say if you can squat five by five for 365 for full depth, I'm going to say that you uh, are well into intermediate, bordering on advanced. No matter how much you weigh, that it's a hell of a lot harder to recover from that. You're going to struggle to come in and replicate the same workload with only 48 hours. You're going to need to take lighter days. You're going to need to spend more time at the same weight. You can't just walk in and hit something like that and two days later come in and PR again and then PR again another two days later. It doesn't work that way once you get more advanced because you're beating your body up more. You are tapping further into your recovery inroads. And it doesn't matter what you weigh. That's not relevant. Does it really matter whether you've gained... 10 pounds to get from one strength level to another if you gain 30 pounds doesn't really matter at the end of the day the new extra strength and the extra workloads that you are capable of generating is going to put more micro tearing on your muscle tissue it's going to put more micro tearing on your connective tissue it's going to put more stress factors little tiny cracks in your bones and it's going to exhaust your peripheral nervous system more than when you were weaker the amount of body weight that you gained is really irrelevant. That doesn't improve your recovery ability dramatically. So it's not really a factor. It's still ultimately about relative strength, maybe compared to your frame, because maybe a bigger, thicker frame can handle more tonnage on it. All right, so maybe frame size is more important, and that's going to be height's going to be the biggest factor in that. Height's going to be a really big factor in that. Maybe it can handle <laughs> more tonnage with less micro fractures, little micro fractures. Uh, but that's hard to gauge, and I don't even know if that's even fair to say. It ultimately comes down to what people need to remember. This is about recovery. It's going to be harder for you to recover when you deadlift 600 pounds. Uh, even if 620 is your max, you pull 600, it is going to tax your recovery more than when you hit 400, when 400 was your max. All right? Even though relative strength, it was slightly easier, your body doesn't necessarily know that. It will tax you further. So the stronger that you get, the more you beat up your recovery with every workout. So every workout that you do, as you get stronger, you're probably going to need to move less total reps with any given percentage of your total uh, strength per workout. Meaning, coming in and doing five sets of 10 with 70% of your max at one point is going to be real hard when you get more advanced. It's going to take you longer to recover if you try to do that. You might only be able to do three sets of 10. Uh, with 70% of your max and still be able to recover and come in and train uh, with a great deal of intensity 48 hours later. That's what we're talking about. It is important that your absolute strength is the biggest gauge there. That is going to be one of the biggest factors in determining what level of advancement you are because the more advanced that you are, the slower you're going to have to progress in the gym. Uh, the less total tonnage you're going to be able to do relative to your maximum strength or even the total tonnage you're going to be able to get away with in the gym or tonnage per minute. 
uh, your frequencies are going to be a little lower, you will find it harder to replicate the same reps and sets and workouts that you did when you were weaker if you're using the same amount of workload relative to your strength. Like I was saying earlier, it is easier to recover from three sets of 10 with 200 pounds than it is to recover from three sets of 10 with 400 pounds, even if they're the same percentage of your max. So relative strength uh, regarding to body weight, I don't think is that important of a factor for determining what sort of program you're, you're running. It's more about your absolute strength and more importantly, your absolute strength compared to where you started. I think the only reason people even include body weight at all in these is because they're about weight classes. You notice when you look at any of those charts, they're broken down by uh, weight classes in powerlifting or Olympic lifting. They, they perfectly match weight classes. Why do you think they do that? Because that's all they're trying to judge. You're just trying to determine how you rank up compared to a weight class. They're not really trying to determine if you're truly novice, intermediate, or advanced, which actually means the difference between planning your training on a weekly basis, like a three-week basis or a six-week basis, versus actually tra planning your training like a year ahead of time. More advanced lifters actually probably need to think in terms of yearly progression. Uh, intermediate lifters probably more like monthly progression or three or six week block progression or 12 week block progression something in that range whereas in novice lifters actually need to think about their day to day and week to week progression that's how you plan your training based upon that and that is all about how much total workload can you generate and beat up your recovery uh, and how fast can you actually progress all right guys but that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time